hello and welcome. So, you have created a mesh character? And now you want to get it animated for Second Life? Then here is how you can do that, by using the new Avastar Mesh tools. This character is used in the tutorial introduction to rigging, from BlenderGuru.com. The tutorial explains in great detail how to create a rig from ground up. The character itself can be downloaded from BlendSwap.com. It is distributed under a free common license. So, let us now see how we can get this character adapted to Second Life and its skeleton. We begin with the bare mesh. Please take care here, the original file comes with all layers enabled. But I only want to work with layer 1 for the mesh and with layer 2 for the armature. I first select the mesh in object mode, and I ensure that the 3D cursor is placed at the mesh origin by calling, object, snap, cursor to select it. Now I switch to layer 2, and add a new Avastar. Then I shift select layer 1, so that I can see both layers at the same time. Our goal is to create the weight maps for our mesh character, and then connect our character to the Avastar rig. To achieve this we have to match both characters as close as possible. So, the better we can match the shapes, the better will be our weight mapping. The easiest way to go is to keep the custom mesh as it is, and adjust the Avastar to it as close as possible. Select the Avastar armature. Then locate the Avatar Shape tab in the Object section of the Properties window. There switch the character to male. And now adjust the body height. Now go to pose mode, and then adjust the bones to match the pose of the mesh. I will only work on the character's left side, and later when I am done, I will copy my work to the right side. You can adjust all available bones, and you also can make use of the Avastar shape sliders to get both characters to match as close as possible. You find the shape sliders in the object data section of the properties window. Please take care to match both characters as tight as possible. However we cannot guarantee that, that the final weight maps are always of good quality. So, please keep in mind that you might have to do some manual fine adjustment in the weight maps. Here it is easier to move the entire mesh to adjust it to the shoulders, the arms, and the legs of the Avastar. The lower legs need to be bended slightly inwards. I use the avatar shape slider for the knee angle here. When I have finished the tweaking of the entire left side of the character, I now select all posed bones. Then copy them to the bone clipboard. And finally paste them to the opposite side. Now I transfer the mesh weights from the Avastar to the mesh, for this purpose we have added our own optimized weight copy tool into Avastar. Shift right select the mesh, you now have selected the Avastar skeleton and the mesh both at the same time. Open the tool shelf, and there click on the copy weights button. By now our mesh has got all necessary weight maps, however the weighting may be not optimal, but it is a good starting point for further improvements. I will describe the secrets of weight painting in the weight paint tutorial. 
In the next step I have to attach my mesh to the armature. This is where the T-Pose Bake Tool comes into play. This tool allows you to bind the mesh to the armature by using the current pose. So we just bake to T-Pose now. And of course we keep the parent to armature check mark checked. The mesh is now attached to the rig, but we still see the original Avastar mesh shining through. We can hide it completely by selecting the armature, and then disable the Avastar mesh visibility in the rig display panel. You find this panel in the object data section of the properties window. Now we can test the rig, and check if the mesh follows the bone movements as expected. We have implemented Auto IK into the Avastar rig. So you actually can just grab any bone and move it around as you like. We have added some movement constraints, such that the character can only be bended into more or less realistic poses. For now let us just do some quick checks here. The entire topic of rigging and waiting will be covered within another tutorial. Take a closer look at the black blotches on the kilt. These parts have got incorrect weight maps and the character skin is intertwining with the cloth. We will fix this later in the Avastar weight pain tutorial. But now we want to see first how we can get this character exported to second life. Well, Avastar has a built-in Kalata export helper tool. This tool ensures that the mesh will be exported fully compatible to the Second Life importer. Just click on the Export button, select an export location, and your character is ready to go to Second Life. Please remember that you must take care about the license of your character mesh. Of course your best option is always to use your own meshes. Otherwise check carefully that your intended usage is covered by the license of the mesh item. All functions described in this tutorial are available from your Avastar upload folder. If you are interested in purchasing Avastar, then please go to the Jazz Shop in Second Life, or purchase the tool via PayPal, directly from our website. Thank you for watching.